One of the men charged with killing Eve Carson could face the death penalty. The other is 17 and is, and is too young for execution under state law. Carolina is in the midst of a year-long examination of capital punishment. Undergraduates will be performing the play Dead Man Walking in April. Carly Swain introduces us to the book's author. Well, I've learned a lot from Susan Sarandon, and she, she says there are two qualities that you need to be a good actor. And one is empathy, capacity for compassion, and the other is imagination. It isn't often that the cast of a theatrical production has the chance to speak with the muse of their work. Sister Helen shared her insights on the production and gave a first-hand account of what it's like to witness a state-mandated execution. And I had strength inside me then. I'd never seen anything like this before or been in this horror show where the protocol is all so polite and the tiles are polished and the coffee pot's purple and people are coming in and out and there's going to be something that happens here tonight and they're getting the sandwiches ready for the press. I mean, it's an event <coughs> and it's to kill this man. Emily Anderson will play Prejean when the play goes up in April. She describes how meeting Sister Helen will contribute to her performance. I think it's very important for me to find my own way with this role and do nothing to try to imitate the woman that I just met over there. And the woman she just met is excited about UNC's production through such a powerful venue. When it's a live 98.6 temperature human being on that stage, who's going to bring you there? There is just no, there's no excuse, for, I mean, no substitute for something like that. In Chapel Hill, I'm Carly Swain, Carolina Week. Carolina Week will have a behind-the-scenes look at rehearsals for the show later this month. The war in Iraq is nearing its fifth anniversary, and some Carolina students are taking their message of protest to the pit. Colorful banners, animated dances, and several speakers all had the same message, end the Iraq war now. Members of different organizations invited the student body to join them in protest against what they call the U.S. occupation of Iraq. From the pit, the demonstration turned into a march around campus. Counter-protester Tony Stevenson defends the right to protest, but he says such demonstrations put U.S. troops in danger. A uh, Harvard study just came out showing that uh, times of increased vocalization against the war um, increase insurgent attacks. Uh, it goes with common sense, but it's been empirically proven now as well. Today's protest on campus parallels Barack Obama's speech in Fayetteville, during which Obama said he'd end the Iraq War if he were elected president. Each year, 100 million people worldwide contract dengue fever, a tropical disease that can sometimes be fatal. But scientists in North Carolina are working on ways to fight the disease. Carolina Week health reporter Sandra Chung has more. Mosquitoes like these in this North Carolina State University lab can transmit the dengue virus. These mosquitoes live in tropical and subtropical areas in Africa, Southeast Asia, the Western Pacific, and Central and South America. At the Carolina Vaccine Institute, immunologist Laura White is testing one of several experimental dengue vaccines. Dengue is already causing epidemics in Hawaii and Puerto Rico, and there is dengue transmission in the Texas-Mexico uh, border. So, uh, you know, it's knocking the door uh, in, in the continental U.S. Dengue fever can have no symptoms, or the virus can cause fever, headaches, joint pain, and nausea. A complication, dengue hemorrhagic fever, might cause seizures, internal bleeding, and even death especially in children. There is no cure. Immunology graduate student Chris Brook has studied the dengue virus. It's a pretty significant public health threat. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's also an extremely interesting virus in that um, very little is known about how it actually makes people sick. We know a lot more about how mosquitoes spread dengue. The dengue virus is spread by mosquitoes like these, the yellow fever mosquito. If I were infected with the dengue virus, these mosquitoes would pick up the virus by feeding on me. The virus could then multiply inside the mosquitoes and be transmitted to the next person these mosquitoes bite. North Carolina State University entomologist Charles Apperson studies mosquitoes that spread dengue virus. It's difficult to develop a vaccine that's going to be stable and long-lasting. With no vaccine anticipated for at least 10 years and with no cure, dengue fever might become a global threat. 
In Chapel Hill, I'm Sandra Chung, Carolina Week. If you travel to an area with an active dengue outbreak, you are advised to wear insect repellent on any exposed skin during daytime hours. This is because mosquitoes that spread dengue are active during the day, not at night like mosquitoes here. Nearly a thousand North Carolinians are enjoying better dental health following a spring break workshop. At Dental Access Days, or DAD, students performed various tasks such as dental fillings and extractions, dental cleanings, and oral hygiene education sessions for patients who aren't able to pay for dental work. Dental school officials say this is a good way for students to learn the importance of giving back to the community. If you're still battling a few stubborn pounds, the top of Lenore will offer a new strategy next week for patrons trying to win the war against fat. That looks pretty good. While these tantalizing treats may tickle your taste buds, they won't do much to help you shed your flab. Fortunately, the top of Lenore has teamed up with Aramark's new Just For You nutrition messaging system that promotes healthy eating decisions with clear information about the pros and cons of certain foods. Patrons hoping to pull a Jared can look for the stickers soon to be plastered near every food arena. Chef Joe Palingra says the simplicity of the program is the key to its success. There's a fair amount of students who are asking for that kind of information and it, it's just visual so they could go there directly and pick it out. So if cliff bars just aren't your jam, ten, then you're chummy to chill and let the Just For You stickers guide your nose to a piping hot side of broccoli, your bathing suit might thank you later. The arrival of the spring equinox tomorrow marks the beginning of the Persian New Year. Following tradition, people of all ages jump over seven small bonfires to say goodbye to the Zoroastrian calendar year 1386 and to celebrate the renewal of life. Last night, people gathered at the NC State Fairgrounds to do just that. Many people say they come to the event every year to celebrate their heritage and culture. We are so far away from our homeland. Um, for most of us, here is, uh, is our second home, uh, but we still like to keep our old traditions. The UNC Persian Cultural Society will host a Persian New Year party on Friday, March 29th in the Great Hall of the Student Union. And we're joined now by weathercaster Katie Costa. Well, Katie, it was kind of gross yesterday and today, um, but I sure hope that Easter is going to be pretty spring-like for us. Well, windy and stormy conditions are in store for us, but will Easter weekend be a nice one? I'll have your springtime forecast next. <laughs> 